Hello everyone. So in this video, we will obviously be going over the insertion sort algorithm. This is a the third algorithm in our playlist here, but I will have to say I think this might be one of the easier sorting algorithms to learn, albeit it might not be the most useful. Uh, so as usual, let's talk a little bit about the time complexity involved with the insertion sort algorithm. Uh, the worst case or most typical scenario we have going here is going to be O n squared, which means that this is going to have an exponential growth. So the more items we have in the array, it will exponentially increase the amount of time it takes to sort that array. Um, the best case scenario, which is typically with a specific case uh, or small data, is going to be more of a linear uh, time complexity, which you know is typically fine. But like I said, that, that's going to have a specific use case when it comes to insertion sort. And it could just be from a small data set. Uh, a large factor in this algorithm is how well the data is already sorted prior to you trying to sort the data. So if it's kind of close to being sorted, there's just a few things out of place, it'll go a whole lot quicker than if it's a really large data set with just everything all over the place. So. Uh, the name comes from the fact that we're going to be taking items out of the array and then inserting them, inserting them, not insorting. <laughs> That's funny though. Inserting them into the correct index. So let's uh, go through this just step by step real quick with the pseudocode that we have down here in our comments. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take an array of values, which you can see on line 19, and we're going to loop through the array minus the base value. Uh, that's a specific thing to this algorithm. Uh, the base value is always going to be index 0, in our case 3 here. Um, and that, well, that's going to be our starting point. We're always going to assume that index 0 is sorted and then base everything else around that value. Um, so that leads us into step 2, which is going to be sorting through the entire array, uh, including index 0, to check if the value is less than the current index. So it's going to be the first step inside the second loop. Um, if it is less than that current index, what we're going to want to do is store it into a temporary variable and also remove it from the original array. So we're going to take it out of the array, store it into a variable, and then down here on our second to last step, we're going to insert it into the correct index. And that is how we're going to sort this array down here. Obviously at the end of the function, we're going to want to return our sorted array so that we can use it later. So uh, the first thing I always like to do here is we're just going to set up the basics of our function. And we're still going to be using ES6 arrow functions for this. So we're going to do const insertion sort. It's going to take in an array. And then we can go ahead and do return the array. Actually, I'm going to change that just so we're 100% clear here. And I still did not uncaps lock. There we go. So we can take this piece of our pseudocode, move it right here, and that's all ready to go. So, so the next thing we're going to do we're going to take this right here. This was step one, then over, and we're going to want to loop through the array minus the base value for that. And just for simplicity's sake, I cannot talk today. We're going to use a for loop here, and we're going to let i equal one, which is kind of unusual. But remember that we're going to loop through the array minus the base value, which is always going to be at index zero. So we're going to start at index one. I already have that. So we're going to want to see if i is less than array dot length. And then we're going to iterate a single value every time. So just increment i by one. So it'll loop through one, and then it'll go through two, and then three, four, five, so on. So that is the first step there. And then we're going to want to go on here and then again, and then start step two which is going to be another for loop. And this time we're going to let j equal zero because we're going to want to loop through the entire array. Uh, very important, that's why I put specific wording in these. The entire array, so we're going to start 
index zero, we're going to make sure that j is in fact less than i for comparison. Then we're going to j plus plus. Awesome. So we have the basics of our two loops set up here. So the next thing on our list is just to simply check if the value is less than the current index. How are we going to do that? We're going to use a conditional, just a simple if statement here. We're going to say that array i, which is going to be from the outer loop, that's the comparison value, and see if that is, a le is less than array j, which is going to be the entire array and, you know, that value. So now then, we can take both of these, because they're going to be housed within this conditional. I actually might format this a little bit just because of the comments. I like to add a little bit of extra spacing to make sure everything's still readable for you all as we go here. So go ahead and do that. So now then, if this returns true, the first thing we want to do is set up a uh, temporary variable and it is going to be array.splice and we're going to splice it at i and then that one value. So if you're not familiar with the splice method, uh, it's a method built into JavaScript arrays and what we're going to do is we're going to give it the starting index and then how many values we want to splice out. So we're going to start at whatever i is and then just take a single value out. It's going to remove it from the array performing this part and it's going to return it storing it into this temporary var variable. So last but definitely not least is we're going to do array.splice again only this time it's going to be a little different. We're going to put j for the starting value. We're going to put zero because we're not going to remove anything out of this array but we're going to do temp zero because splice will return an array because hypothetically if we did two values here it'd be an array of two numbers so just remember even though that's just returning the one value that value is still going to be housed inside of an array so temp will be an array and we access that single value just from index zero so what this is going to do now is start at index j we're going to remove zero values out of the array and then we're going to insert this one temporary value that we have stored in our variable and then down here, like we already had set up, that should return the array. So now if we run our algorithm, we can see we've got this jumbled mess sort of very nice and neat for three, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, and 10. So let's uh, try to visualize this a little bit if we can. So the first thing I would like to look at is we're just gonna console log right here. Uh, I'm not going to do like I or J by itself just because it's going to be a single increasing number. But we're going to look at what array I looks like here. Okay. So as you can see, it's our array, but it's minus the base value of this first three. So we got five, three, six, ten, nine, four, and seven. Same thing right here. 5, 3, 6, 10, 9, 4, 7. So that's the order that we're looping through with the outer array. I'm going to console this out real quick. And then we're going to do the same thing in here so that you can see that array j should look very similar. It does, except for there's a lot of duplicates, right? So we got 3, 3, 5, 3, 3, 5, 3, 3, 5, 6, 3, 3, 5, 6, 10, so on and so forth. Because every time we go inside J, we're going to loop through the entire array looking for this condition. What we're going to do here now, just to once again try to make it very clear what the computer is actually doing, is we're going to label these. like so. And if we run it again, so we have outer five and then we take the inner three. 
So we have three right here. Three. Right, yep. Ray J, Ray J. So that's three right there. Ray I, which we console logged up here, is five. Five is not less than three. So that does not meet the condition. So it moves along and we do another outer where we have this equals three now and this equals three. The reason that they're both three is because we have this three, we've done check five, and now we have the second three, right? So we get to the outer with the three and then the inner also equals three. That also does not meet this condition because three is not less than three. That's a very interesting thing about the insertion sort is that this three will not be pushed down the line by this three. This three will always come after this one. It'll, it'll, the further down the line the value is, if it equals out, it'll still stay further down the line, basically, is what that's doing. Okay. So now that I'm going to log both of these out, you can go through and examine the outer and the inner, because you can see that as we go down, there's a lot more inner loops happening as the array grows and is more sorted. It takes it longer to find where it goes. This is part of that exponential growth here is because we have one inner. We have two inner, three inner, five. One, two, three, four, five again. One, two, three, four, five, six, so on and so forth. This one's actually not too bad because, like I said, it's a small data set. Uh, we're going to console both of these out. Now let's just look at what our temporary variable is doing. Temp, uh, I can't spell. We're just going to say temp. And it's going to log temp. Look at that. As we run, you can see that temp actually is only used four times in this entire run of this algorithm. Four times do we actually enter this block, slice out a value, and then insert it back in. That's all we're doing. Because uh, the vast majority of these are obviously failing this check right here. But this kind of illustrates the problem sometimes with this algorithm as far as how long it takes to perform something. It's because if you go back to where we were logging both the inner and the outer loop, that was a massive list just to move these four values, right? So there's that. And then down here, what we can do, is we're just going to console log. Actually, I just had an idea. We're going to do post sort and log the array. I'm just going to copy this, put it right above, and do free sort. So as you can see, uh, pre-sort we have, oh, I, I need to do that up here because that value is missing because we've already spliced it out by this point up here in the temporary variable. So if we log it here, we'll actually get what we were looking for. So we have three, five, three, six, ten, nine, four, seven. And then you can see post-sort, we've moved this three and inserted it right here between that three and the five. So like I said, this three is the same as this three. Um, we're going to go down again, and then the pre-sort is going to be three, three, five, six, ten, nine, four, seven. Uh, the post-sort is going to move this nine and insert it between these two right here. The pre-sort on this one is going to be the same as the post-sort on that one, so I'm not going into that. The post-sort on this one here is going to take this four and insert it right down here. And then the pre-sort matches the post-sort again. And then finally, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this seven and insert it between the six and the nine. So I hope this has helped you not only learn how to code the inserts and sort algorithm in JavaScript, but maybe understand it a little better. Um, of the visualizations that we did on this one, I think this right here is probably the most important to really look at and think about how it's working. Um, but as usual, I will actually keep this with all the console logs in the replit and uh, post that in the description below. If you have any algorithms that you would like me to explain and visualize for you like this, uh, leave that down in the comments below or any other coding related videos you would like to see. And uh, thank you for watching the video as always, and I will see you in the next one.